Hi everyone, Vian from Mountain Road here and today I've got another special gravel riding video for you. So, I've been getting a lot of questions lately on what exactly is a gravel bike? And I thought today I want to explain it in the most simplistic and elementary manner possible. If you're an experienced gravel rider, you probably want to skip over this video. I suggest you know you check out my gravel bike review that I did a couple of weeks ago. You'll find that much more entertaining and a lot more detailed. But for those other riders out there, maybe you're completely new. You've just heard of gravel riding. Or maybe you're a road rider and you sort of want to start exploring this world of gravel riding. I figured this video will be the perfect foundational level information that you might need to get started in gravel riding. So we're going to break it down. I'm going to go into explaining the differences of a gravel bike with both a road bike and also a mountain bike. I'm also going to link to a blog post that I wrote on this specific topic. There I go into a bit more detail. I'll add in a cyclocross bike and I'll also add in a hybrid bike. But just to keep things very simple, we're going to look at three different types of bikes. Road bikes, mountain bikes, and where a gravel bike fits in on that spectrum. So at the end of this video, hopefully you'll know the difference between a road bike, a mountain bike, and also a gravel bike, and be able to know why. A gravel bike is such a super useful bike to add into your collection. Maybe even to replace both those other two bikes. So let's get started and break it down as we head through all three different types of bikes. Let's break down those three kind of bikes. A road bike, a mountain bike and a gravel bike in the most simplistic terms possible. Let's relate it to something that we all have seen or had experience with in the past. Cars, right? So let's think of the road bike first. The road bike, what is that? That's your sports car. Super fast, built for performance and speed. Everything about it is designed to go fast. Right, on the other end of the spectrum, we have a mountain bike. What is a mountain bike? In car terms, I would put a mountain bike equivalent to that rugged 4x4 can take you just about anywhere over rough surfaces, rough terrain. You don't have to think about it. You know it can get you through that terrain. So somewhere in between those two extreme ends of our spectrum will fit the gravel bike. Something that can do a little bit of both. It can be good on the road, but it can also be really good off-road. And that's where the modern day SUV comes into play. So for me, a gravel bike in car terms, it's pretty much like your SUV. It's fast and sporty on the road, but it has that utility component where you can very easily strap on a bunch of bags, take it off-road, and you know enjoy a bikepacking trip or a multi-day touring kind of event. Super useful, versatile. That is the bottom line of a gravel bike. It is just so stocked up with unique features from both the road side as well as the mountain biking side that makes it this perfect all-road vehicle. We're going to break it down into a few key areas so you can see why I say a gravel bike could be that perfect all-rounder bike that can do both road and off-road equally well. Let's check it out. There's so many differences between these different types of bikes that it's almost impossible for me to cover it all in one video. I do suggest that you check out my blog post. There I go into a few other areas of comparison and there's a super handy table where you can easily reference not only mountain bikes, road bikes and gravel bikes but I also throw in both cyclocross bikes and also hybrid bikes into the mix. So if you're still a little unsure, do check out my blog post. But let's get started on the first area of comparison the handlebars. Right, so many will say that the handlebars that you find on the gravel bike is pretty much the key, key feature of what distinguishes a gravel bike from specifically the mountain bike. That's because even though a gravel bike sits in between a road and a mountain bike, it leans much heavier towards the road side of things. So that's also why you'll find drop handlebars equipped on all gravel bikes. Why is that? Well, let's think of it. The road side of things, it's pretty clear. Bikes designed to be fast, performance-orientated. 
what that dropped handlebar position allows you to do is to get into that aerodynamic tucked position, right? You can get your elbows in, head is lower, and you're much more aerodynamic. Speed and performance, that is the whole aim of a road bike. On the other end of that spectrum, with mountain bikes, we find straight handlebars. Why is that? Well, what a straight handlebar allows you to do is have a lot more control and stability. Obviously, the downside of that type of handlebar is that the rider's elbows are tucked out, and obviously that's not as efficient when it comes to an aerodynamic position. Just by sitting with your arms outright, creates a bigger frontal area and it's going to naturally slow you down because of that wind resistance. And this is where the gravel bike comes in. And many will argue if it's not fitted with a drop handlebar then it can't be classified as a gravel bike. In fact, I think the movement that led to the establishment of gravel bikes actually came about because of people fitting drop handlebars to bikes that traditionally would have been seen as an off-road bike. Why would gravel bikes want that same performance? Well, think of many of the races out there on the calendar. Maybe you've heard of something like the Dirty Kansas, a 200 mile race that happens in Kansas each year. 200 miles. You definitely want to have a little bit more aerodynamic benefits over such a long distance. You don't want to show up to a race like that with a straight handlebar sitting upright or comfortable but definitely going to slow you down and make for a very, very long day out there in that wind. So, first area of the comparison, as you can see up on the screen right now, gravel bikes definitely leans a lot more towards the sporty, racy, speed and performance orientated nature of a road bike equipped with a drop down over. Let's head over into the second area of comparison. The suspension that you find fitted to either your road bike, a mountain bike, or a gravel bike. Right, this is going to be a little bit more technical than, say, the drop handlebars, but stick with me on this one. And if you're an experienced rider, you might have to watch the whole thing before you completely agree or disagree with me on this particular section. To make things just super simplistic, let's start off and say that as we know, most road bikes out there don't offer any type of suspension. It's not necessary. Road surfaces, if they are well maintained and puddle free, will obviously not require any kind of suspension. You also want to go as fast as possible on a road bike and hence the additional weight of a suspension and also the lack of aerodynamics when it comes to suspension will also not be something that you need on a road bike. Over to the other side of our spectrum, the mountain bike. Obviously, you might have seen a mountain bike and they come in different shapes and sizes. Some will have only front suspension, some will have both front and rear suspension. That 4x4 analogy that we had used earlier, that's where the mountain bike absolutely shines. It's all the designing and engineering that's gone into specifically the shock absorption for mountain bikes that have made them such super useful tools on the rugged off-road terrain. If now we want to head into the middle somewhere, then we need to obviously make a compromise. Are we going to lean again a little bit more towards the road performance side, or are we going to lean a little bit more towards the off-road mountain biking side? Now here's my first disclaimer, and this is a very generalized statement, I'm going to come back to this at the end. Most gravel bikes out there offer no suspension. That's where the wheel and the tire will come into play in our third comparison. For now, let's make the simplistic generalization that a gravel bike does not offer any type of suspension. And why would that be the case? Well, again, if you're on that long endurance off-road adventure, you want to be as aerodynamic and as efficient as possible. That means you don't want to be carrying around the additional weight of a shock absorption system that you might not necessarily need all the time. 
Think of a gravel road, a nice wide open country road where you're just humming along, small little bumps, maybe a bit of a washboard effect in that road. You truly do not need that full front and rear suspension just to smooth out that ride. And this is where gravel bikes have made such a huge, huge stride, both through the geometry and just also through the way the wheels work, which we'll get to, you can really smooth out a lot of those smaller, more high frequency bumps when doing a gravel ride. And that is the beauty of a gravel bike. It leans a little bit more towards that minimalistic, slim down, lightweight componentry that you would find on a road bike. But now I want to get back to, I know those experienced gravel riders still watching this will be just jumping through the screen and wanting to just stop me right there and correct me because we do find a lot a lot of innovation coming into the gravel market right now specifically on the front of suspension and maybe just a quick google search will reveal bikes like niners mcr9 or specialized diverge or maybe bmc's unrestricted or even Cannondale Stop Stones models. Those are all examples of gravel bikes that do offer some form of suspension. Definitely not as much as you'll find on a mountain bike, but it does add to what a gravel bike can do. And I foresee that as we continue along this line of development and innovation that's coming into the gravel scene, we will find that the suspension will be specifically one area where those lines between the categories get increasingly blurred. All right, so that's it. The first two areas of comparison. We've looked at drop handle bars. We've looked at the area of suspension. And now we're heading into our third area. And this to me is definitely the most important when it comes to gravel bikes distinguishing itself from other types of bicycles out there. It's the wheel and the tire combination. Let's check it out. All right, heading into our third area of comparison, the tire and the wheel combination. All right, even though tires and wheels are technically two separate areas of comparison, I want to group them into one because it's in that combination of both the tire and also the wheel that you gain the most versatility out of your gravel bike. Let's start off on the road side of things. To explain it again as simplistic as possible, I'm not going to go into all the technical details of exactly how the measurements work. It can get a little confusing at times, so I'm going to stick with one of two choices. For road bikes, you essentially get two different wheel sizes. Both the standard, what we call 700C wheel, or a slightly smaller wheel diameter which is classified as the 650B wheel. So I have an example of a regular road wheel right here with me. This being the 700C wheel, and so measuring the diameter straight through is what gives this wheel the 700C characteristic. What you can also get on the other hand is a slightly smaller wheel measuring a shorter distance in the hammer, giving you a slightly smaller wheel size. So why would you want two different wheel sizes? Well, we're going to see in a minute when we group that with our tires, it essentially provides for a little bit more wiggle room in your frame to fit a broader tire whenever you are running a smaller wheel set. So on the mountain bike side, we again have two different wheel sizes, both the 27 and a half inch wheel, as well as the slightly bigger wheel with the 29 inch wheels. Right, so why on the mountain bike side would we want different wheel sizes? Well, if we go back in history, mountain bikes were traditionally fitted with the even smaller 26 inch wheels. So those have since sort of gone off the market as the riders discovered that with a 29 inch wheel, the bigger ones, you can essentially roll over very rough surfaces. Whereas with a 27 and a half inch wheel, that ability to just easily roll over a rougher surface is a bit more reduced, 
but what that small wheel size provides is the ability to navigate around obstacles more easily. So a little bit more agility that you get from that smaller wheel size. So you can see the two sides of the spectrum. Both ends have a slightly bigger wheel as well as a slightly smaller wheel size, each for different reasons. Now we want to group this with our tire and tires come in different sizes and maybe you've seen just the regular road tire out there something like this this is a 28 millimeter road tire nice and smooth gives you low rolling resistance and you can very easily roll over a regular paved road providing you with speed and performance like the theme has been thus far. However, on the opposite end of the spectrum, with the mountain bike, there we find much, much wider tires. Even up to something like a 2.4 or even in extreme cases, 3 inch tires that provide for extreme grip, comes with a very knobbly surface and it just allows you to corner and go down very rugged terrain much, much easier. Then, we want to sit somewhere in the middle yet again with our gravel bike and this is where something like this gravel bike tire is absolutely ideal right here I've got a 37 millimeter tire so you can see fits in well within that spectrum of both the road thinner tire on the one side and then the mountain bike thicker tire on the other side all right so why again would we want that tire that kind of strikes a balance between the speed and performance of the road bike but the agility and also the ruggedness of the mountain bike on the other end and it comes down to where you want to ride your gravel bike and tire choice is going to be one of the key areas that you're going to have to consider whenever you're thinking about a particular ride maybe the gravel road that you ride it's going to be nice and smooth and you really don't need a lot of traction in those cases it could be something very similar to your road bike that has a smooth surface and is just a little bit bigger. Maybe you're going on a very extreme off-road ride with your gravel bike and you do want to have that extra little bit of grip, that little bit more traction in the tight corners and you know, maybe you're going to experience some mud, maybe you're going to experience a slightly rougher terrain over roots and some minor rocks. In those instances, you can then also flip over into a bigger, broader tire. So we've got to answer one additional question when it comes to having a bigger tire on your gravel bike. Why the big fuss about the bigger tire as compared to your road bike? Well, it comes down to one thing. Lower pressure. By fitting a bigger tire onto your gravel bike, it essentially allows you to run that tire at a much lower tire pressure. That gives you a bit more stability and also helps to smooth out the ride. So if we go back to my previous point, if in general most gravel bikes do not offer any kind of suspension, it's in those lower tire pressures that you get that extra little bit of shock absorption by running a lower tire pressure. And that's the big fuss with gravel bikes and their ability to run increasingly wider, wider and wider tires. So make sure you check out your gravel bike, see if it can accommodate either 650B and also the 700C or maybe just one of those wheels. Also make sure that you think ahead of time, what type of terrain do you want to ride on? Will it be a nice, easy, smooth going surface or will it be a little bit more rugged? In which case you'll be leaning towards the mountain bike side of the wheels. <music> Right, so that's our comparison of the three different types of bikes. Obviously today's explanation a little bit more simplistic, took a little bit more of an elementary approach to this. There are so many differences between these different kind of bikes. Do check out my blog post for a little bit more detail on some of the other differences out there, but also as we move forward in this continuing evolution of gravel bikes and new innovation coming into the market, we'll continue to see even more differences arise and also just category lines being completely blurred in the future. I want to finish off with this one last thing. And that is just to say that no matter what bike you have, whether you have a road bike or whether you have a mountain bike, that should not disqualify you from getting outside and just enjoying the outdoors riding a bike. 
Um, and yeah, if you want to pitch up at a gravel race with a mountain bike, of course, by all means, this should not disqualify you from racing in a particular event if you do not have, quote, a gravel bike. The final point that I will leave you with is just to say that whatever kind of bike you have, just make sure that you get on it as often as possible and get out to enjoy the wide open spaces that we have available. All right, so that's it from my side. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. And uh, we'll be back in the future with more awesome gravel content for you. Uh, be sure to check out this space. Until then, this is Vian from Mountain Road Ride. Enjoy that ride. Thank you.